Paul was relating to all the things that they did as good, but he said giving was a great thing. So what what is what is um what does it mean to to uh to to abound to have more than enough? Well, turn with me over to Matthew chapter 14 verse 20. Matthew chapter 14 verse 20. I'm not going to read the whole story, but I'm going to give you kind of the the cliff notes of what happened. Jesus was preaching and there was a crowd that was following him and they had been with him the whole day. And so Jesus said, listen, you know, we've these people have been with us um, and uh, and we got to do something here. Um, he in verse 13, he says, and when he heard it, they departed from there and they departed to a desert, pl- deserted place by himself. But the multitudes heard it and they followed him. Jesus had uh, John the Baptist had just been beheaded. Uh, Jesus now was was um, was uh, was was following and doing what God called him to do. And he was trying to get away to a silent place. And the people heard that Jesus was going to this place. So Matthew chapter 14, um, all these people were coming to Jesus. Verse 14, and, and, and Jesus went and he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert, deserted place and the hour is already late. Why don't you send these people away so they can go get something to eat? Jesus, just send these people away. You've been healing them. You know, you've been praying for them. And now it's late. We're out in the middle of the desert. There's no food here. The restaurants have closed. You know, the grocery stores have shut down. There's nothing for them to do except go home. Maybe they can get something to eat at their house. And Jesus said, no. Let's feed them here. And Jesus said to Andrew, he says, well, what what do we have? Look at verse 16. He says, but Jesus said to them, do not send them away. You give them something to eat. Look at your neighbor and say, you give them something to eat. One of the marks of a missional church is that the pastor is not the only one that's feeding the people. You give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. You can pray. You pray for them. You can uh, believe God for their healing. You lay hands on them and heal them. Jesus was testing his disciples. He said, look, I've been showing you how to do this. Now it's time for you to do it. He said, you go and feed them. And uh, what did they say? They said, um, w- we, we only have here five loaves and two fishes. And they weren't even there. The little boy brought them. Five loaves and two fishes. They were telling God what their lack was. They were telling God what they didn't have. How many of us come, when it comes to doing things for God, God, you want to use little old me? God, I I, I can't do that, God. No, God, you you must be wanting somebody else to do that. I can't do that, God. It's just me. God says, no, with me in you, you are more than enough. With me in you, what little you have, give it to me. And so what happens? He says, uh, bring it to me, take what you have and give it to God. Whatever your gift, your talent, and your ability, whatever it is, give it to God. Take your time, whatever little time you have, give it to God. Take your talent, whatever little talent it is, give it to God. And take your treasure, whatever little treasure it is, and give it to God and watch God bless it. Because guess what? If that little boy had held on to his two, his, his little loaf, and his two fishes, and guess what he would have went home with? His two, his two fishes and his five loaves of bread. If you take nothing away from today's message, is this. If you leave with the same thing you brought, that's all you're going to have when you leave. But if you give God something, God may give you more than you gave to him. When are we going to step out on faith and say, God, I'm going to give you what little I have. I like this. So Jesus commanded the disciples to tell them to sit down in, in hundreds and, and tens and, and, and tell them to sit down in groups. And then they, they started to distribute the food, started to distribute the food. Jesus took that little thing that they had, the time, the talent, and the treasure, the same thing that all of us have, and he took it and he broke it. He blessed it, and then he gave it out. And I believe that he started giving, more was made available, and he started giving. And the disciples were like, well, hold up. I thought we only had five loaves and two fishes. Well, yeah, but God took that thing and multiplied it. And then here's what I like. At the end, the disciples took these baskets that they had, and what did they do? They went around and picked up the scraps. They picked up what was left over. The Bible says they had 12 baskets left over. Two fish, 
five loaves of bread equaled about 5,000. The Bible says mainly about 15,000 people got to eat and were full, and plus there were 12 baskets of fragments left over. You tell me God ain't good. God can take what little you give to him, and God can make it much, but you got to be willing to give yourself. That little boy said, I'm giving myself. My mama fixed me this lunch. I don't know. I just Maybe I just wanted to bring it. I don't know. But the little boy said, look, I'm going to take what I got, and I'm going to give it to you. It reminds me of that little drummer boy we sing about during Christmas. You know, come, they told me, pour up a pump pump. I ain't got no gifts to bring, pour up a pump pump, but I can play my drum for the king. What drum are you playing? What are you doing for the king? Oh, we're going to wait till we get it all together. Wait till I get something big to give to God. No, start right now. Kind of like this. This is my little example. I need another brother to grab that table and uh, pick that up. Thank you. It's kind of like this. And give me some room to walk behind it. Here's, here's the way we see. Here's the way church is. Here's the way a lot of us do God. We do, we do him wrong. What do we do God? Now, I said we all have the same amount to some degrees of, well, all of us have the same amount of talent. When it comes to the things of God, this is us. This is God. God, just to to let you know, um, God wants it all. Okay? Just just want to throw it out there. God wants it all. In case you're wondering, God, do you really want 10%? No, he don't want 10%. He really wants it all. He wants everything. So we all got the same amount of time. All of us got the same amount of time. But here's what we do. Some of us take our our time and we give God just a little bit of our time. Just just a little bit. Just just enough to say, I'm okay. We say, okay. And we take this, our little bit of time, our, our prayer time, a little bit of our week. For those that don't come out to Bible study because you're watching TV, I'm going to get on you, yes. Uh, and you ain't got no real good reason not to be here. You just give God a little bit of time, just a little bit of time. God, he don't want all my time. He just wants a little bit of time. And so when you find yourself in a situation, then you start praying. A bill come due. Lord Jesus, please, Lord, please, Lord, please help me. And God said, okay, I'm going to give you back what you gave to me. I'm going to give you a little bit of time. You want all my time when you're in a problem, but when it's your time, you want to give me just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Is this you? Do you give God just a little, just a little bit? Not to inconvenience you, because when he start inconveniencing you, then it's on my time. But God, okay, during, uh, before we go eat, um, dear Jesus, thank you for letting our Jesus' name. Amen. We give our little blessing to God. Just a little time. Oh, but don't let a relative get sick. Don't let a bill get due. Don't let us try to get a job, a promotion. Then we come to church, and we're going to try to make up for all this. But in, real, in reality, we're giving God just a little bit of our time. And we wonder why God doesn't come through for us. And then we're upset with God. I, I, I suggest or I submit most folks who are upset with God about something God didn't do, give God this amount of time. But then you got those, and you, this is what we do. We give it to God. And maybe God works for us and maybe he doesn't. But we're like still religious in our time. But we give it to God. But then you got those that give God a lot of time. God, I'm going to be available to you whenever you need me. If you need me to pray, you need me to fast, you need me to submit, you need me to support God, I'm giving you big time. And guess what? When you give God big time, guess what God gives you? God gives you big time. God speaks to you. God gives you revelation. God opens up doors. God gives you favor. God gives you wisdom. God gives you access. When you give God big time, guess what God gives you? He gives you big time. God says, I'm able to redeem the time. You may say, well, man, I'm losing time by spending all this time with God. God said, no, I can recycle that time and give you more time than you ever dreamed. God can advance some things. Maybe it would have taken five years for the average person who gave God this amount of time. It would take them forever to do something but God. But God can speak to you in one moment of favor and advance you, jump you above the line, put you in front of the case. He can do those things because why? You gave God big time. When you give God big time, God comes back and he does supernatural things in your life because 
He knows that you put him first. Look, time. All of us got time. But what are we giving God? A little bit of time? Or are we giving him big time? Let's give God some big time. And then all of us have some type of talent. We can sing or we can dance before the Lord. All of us have something to give. If you think that you have nothing to give, then you're sorely mistaken. God gave you something. Do you know how to talk to people? Are you good with computers? Are you good with administration? Are you good with children? Are you good with leadership? Are you good with hospitality? Are you good with just, are you, are you creative? Can you sing? Can you push a button? Can you open a door? Can you help somebody park a car? Can you fix a sandwich? Can you go and pray for someone? What can you do? God wants us to give that to him. And God shouldn't have to beg us. If God gave us everything, then why are we giving him just a little bit? There's no reason why each and every one of us can't be involved in a ministry on a regular basis. It's a shame before God that a few people have to do all the work. And I thank God that we're getting new people who have a vision for God. And I don't care if they've been here for 10 years or 10 days, if they love the Lord, and if you're working with kids, you pass the background check, we're going to let you serve. We're going to let you serve. And those that are serving now, don't be upset. Hey, the more the merrier. We should be happy that there's more people to help serve. So what is it that you can do for God? What is it? What talent and ability do you have for God? I like this, the Macedonians. They said, look, we first gave ourselves to God and then to, then to us. He said they gave themselves to us by the will of God. It was God's will that they submitted to their authority. But they brought, their, they brought everything that they had to him. And they brought their talent and they gave it to God. The Macedonians gave their treasure. I mean, they gave their, their time. They gave big time. They gave their talent, whatever it is you have. And then this is one of the hardest things that most of us do. This is the hardest thing for us to do. Now, this spiritual warfare happens when we start talking about this. I'm, I, saints be praying right now. Saint, this is where the rubber meets the road. Pastor, I can give you time. I can give you my talent. But then God wants, remember we said he wants it all. He wants your treasure. Now, <clears throat> the only way we can identify treasure or what we associate treasure with is, see, y'all smart. And what happens is when, when we come to God, when it's offering time, the one thing that we do, because we know that it's right to give, we break God off a piece. Somebody say break God off a piece. You break him off a piece of the whole because you got to keep the whole to yourself, but you break him off a piece. So when it's offering time, we give God. And we give. So you say, I gave. You can't say I didn't give. No, yeah, you gave. But that's what we break. We break that off for God. We, we break him off a piece. 